Hello, you absolute legends. A few videos ago, we took a look at some of the worst Doom ports ever made, and it was surprising to a lot of you that people actually had made the conscious decision to play and even speedrun them. These terrible ports were marred with horrible frame rates, poor controls, tiny screens, and walls that failed at their one and only job. Now it is time to wash that bad taste out of our mouths with a look at some of the best Doom ports ever released. But what exactly makes a port good? While the original Doom was pretty epic, it was obviously still primitive and lacked the kind of customization you would find in modern titles. Since then, many quality of life improvements have been introduced in one form or another to make the overall experience much more enjoyable. This is where source ports were king, and I want to take a moment to explain why source ports were so important for Doom speedrunning. And just to clarify, a source port is generally a fan-made port of the Doom engine that is used to run Doom on the PC. id Software released the source code for Doom in 1997, allowing fans to take control and make the kind of changes they wanted to see implemented into the game. This was especially crucial for speedrunners, who at the time were dealing with a couple of annoying movement mechanics. The first was the lack of an auto-run option. I have never mentioned the run mechanic in Doom before because the source ports that players use these days essentially make it obsolete. But in the original release, in order to move quickly, you would need to hold down the run key. If you didn't hold down this key, you would move slowly, which is obviously terrible for speedrunning. Having to arbitrarily hold down an extra key 100% of the time is not only a nuisance, but also increases tension in the hands, which causes strain over time. In the early days, players would either use a hack to trick the game into believing the run key was always pressed, or they would physically tape the button down. Nowadays, almost all source ports have an auto-run option available. Another terrible mechanic was vertical mouse movement. We all know the mouse is used to turn, but with vertical mouse movement, the mouse would also move Doom Guy forwards and backwards. This makes turning extremely imprecise, and again, source ports give the player the ability to disable this. Another huge improvement that source ports allow is higher resolutions. Whenever I show footage of Doom in my videos, it looks nice and crisp, but that's only because I use the source port PR Boom Plus. If you watch footage of the original Doom, you can see there is a huge difference in the quality of the graphics. There are many other things that source ports allow you to alter, but generally the controls and the graphics are the two that really stand out for me. Until 2020, source ports were the definitive way to play Doom on the PC, but a recent official port may be changing that. So without further ado, let's check out some awesome Doom ports. And a quick note, if you want to compete in a fun Doom speedrunning challenge with the potential of winning a Steam voucher, stick around to the end of the video or check the pinned comment. I really hope you enjoy. Now before we go on, a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community that hosts thousands of classes where you can learn pretty much anything you can think of. I am of the opinion you should always spend some of your time learning something new, and Skillshare is the perfect place to explore new skills. I made the leap of faith to start making YouTube videos two years ago, and it has completely changed my life. I think everyone should give being creative a go, and you never can predict what might become of it. If you want to unlock your creativity, I suggest going through the class Find Your Style by Andy Pizza. The exercises contained within will really help you to develop your own unique voice. Whether you want to learn animation, music, or web development, Skillshare has got you covered. Premium membership is very affordable at less than $10 a month, and you can even grab a free trial by being one of the first thousand legends who click the link in the description. Developed by Nerve Software and released in 2019 for all modern consoles, the classic Doom Unity port is my number one top recommendation for anyone looking to play Doom in the modern era. Funnily enough, until this port was officially released for the PC in 2020, playing Doom on your home computer wasn't the most straightforward process. Games that were developed for MS-DOS aren't usually supported by newer versions of Windows, so they almost always require an update or to be run through something like DOSBox, which emulates MS-DOS. Doom didn't have an official updated version on the PC, which meant that if you did buy it from a platform like Steam, it would run through DOSBox, and you would be playing the game just like it was in 1993. If you are a purist looking for that authentic vintage Doom experience, this is fine, but for modern gamers looking for the most pleasant experience, this really isn't the best way to play. 
This basically led to players simply buying the WAD from Steam and then playing the game through source ports, which are far superior. However, with the release of Unity for the PC in January of this year, this is no longer necessary, as Unity is a really nice port. It looks fantastic, it sounds fantastic, and it feels fantastic to play. In fact, Unity plays so well that it has sparked somewhat of a revival in Doom speedrunning, with many people now choosing to speedrun this version of the game. But make no mistake, this version is different and therefore necessitates its own separate rankings and competition. One of the biggest differences is the changing of the default strafe value. If you have watched some of my earlier Doom videos, you might be familiar with the term SR50. This is a technique used to increase the strafe value from its default of 40 up to 50, granting a slight gain in overall speed. It is a very difficult technique for a couple of reasons, but I would say one of the key barriers to its use is the fact that you can't turn while doing it. Therefore, only the top players take full advantage of it. However, in the Unity port, the default value for strafing has been changed to 50, making SR50 something that happens automatically. Not only this, but now you can turn while using it. Overall, this lowers the skill ceiling of the game dramatically, but it also makes it much easier for newer players to compete at the top level. The hardcore Doom speedrunners will continue to play the original game through source ports, but a ton of newer players are really having fun with this new version. That being said, even some of the best OG Doom speedrunners are playing Unity and having a great time doing it. A testament to how smooth this game feels to play. Another amazing new feature is the addition of centiseconds to the end screen timer, which adds a lot more depth to competition. And of course, auto run is now an option and vertical mouse movement is no longer included. If you had any desire to play or speedrun Doom, I strongly recommend picking up the Unity port. I personally don't even speedrun Doom, but I had a blast trying to see how low I could get for a hanger on Ultraviolence. I ended up with a pretty respectable 9.37 behind none other than Depravity, but knowing my audience, as soon as they get their hands on this, my record will be thrust down the ranks in no time. Developed by Vicarious Visions and released in 2005, The Ultimate Doom was included in Doom 3's Collector's Edition for the Xbox. This was one of the first direct copies of the original game that was available on a platform other than the PC. I say one of because a direct copy of Doom 2 was ported to the Tapwave Zodiac in 2004, but stories of anyone actually playing this version can't be confirmed and should be met with heavy skepticism. Technically, the Xbox version of Doom is a good port as it remains very true to the original, containing all of the same maps, enemies and pickups. If you did want the classic Doom experience on a console, this would definitely be one of your top options. That being said, all of the outdated control issues remain and are even magnified in this version. An auto run option isn't available, and there is no control customization, meaning that speedrunning this game becomes a nuisance, as it is a requirement to hold down the left trigger the entire time. And it gets even worse, because the cheat codes in this version are not only easy to input, but they all require you to hold down the left trigger while doing so. This means that if you are always holding down the left trigger, you will inadvertently activate cheat codes which would automatically void any speedrun attempts. The only solution to this problem is for speedrunners to intentionally release the run button between inputs so as not to accidentally activate codes. The Xbox also has another weird oddity where Doom Guy can actually move during the opening fade of each stage. This leads to a jarring effect where Doom Guy instantly warps when the level begins. Another interesting change is the addition of two secret levels, one of which being accessible by using a secret exit switch on the first level hangar. This leads to the record being a mere 5 seconds. The relative rarity of the game, combined with the outdated and annoying control issues, result in a pretty barren speedrunning terrain. The game also has been known to crash at seemingly random times, definitely not something you want to deal with when speedrunning. Still, the runs themselves don't look too bad. In my Terrible Ports video, I included Doom on the Game Boy Advance because of its hilariously broken nature in speedrunning. Of all of the Doom ports, this version has been uniquely destroyed by abusing Out of Bounds, leading to the quickest speedrun of any port. Doom 2, on the other hand, is essentially unbreakable. 
Developed by Taurus Games and released in October of 2002, the Game Boy Advance port of Doom 2 runs on a completely different engine than its predecessor. Taurus had recently developed Duke Nukem Advance and simply carried over the existing engine. The result is a different gaming experience, and if you've played both Doom 1 and 2 on the Advance, it is a very noticeable one. Strafing is slightly slower, meaning that the facing angle while running needs to be adjusted to account for that. The Game Boy Advance versions of Doom were pioneers when it came to controls, as they were the first console ports to support an auto-run option. They also allowed button customization, and Doom 2 even allows you to adjust turning sensitivity. Doom 2 contains all of the original maps, looks great for a portable system of the time, and sounds better than Doom 1. Try as they may, speedrunners have thus far been unable to break the game in any way. Not a single instance of getting out of bounds has been discovered, essentially making this the most rock-solid version of Doom ever made. The world record for Doom 2 for the Game Boy Advance sits at 42 minutes and 35 seconds, achieved by Alexo on the 8th of April 2020. Evidently, it's a long speedrun. This is partly due to the lack of available shortcuts, but also due in part to some noticeable slowdowns that can happen on complex levels, leading to extra difficulty in controlling Doomguy. The Advance isn't the most powerful of consoles, and a couple of levels had to be split in half in order to preserve memory. It does have a couple of weird bugs as well, including one that prevents armor from carrying over to the next level until you collect another armor pickup. But all in all, Doom 2 is a faithful port that ends up being a pleasant experience with its quality of life improvements and relatively smooth gameplay. Developed by Williams Entertainment and released in November of 1995, the PlayStation port is arguably the greatest version of Doom ever released. Sure, 25 years later we have the Unity port that looks and plays much better, but compared to its contemporaries at the time of its release, Doom on the PlayStation was a shining beacon of epicness. Every single other port released in the 90s was seriously compromised when compared to the original MS-DOS release in some way, whether that be in the form of poorer graphics, terrible or non-existent music or sound effects, smaller screen size, fewer levels, or horrendous frame rate. But Doom on the PlayStation was epic in almost every way. In some ways, it may even be subjectively better than the original. The music and sound effects were completely redone, removing the existing metal soundtrack in favor of a more ambient, horror-style music selection. In my opinion, the sound of weapons firing and the grunts and moans of the various enemies sound superior to the DOS version. The game looks fantastic and even adds some fancy lighting to give the game a bit more personality. It contains 59 levels, more than double of most of the other 90s ports, and generally runs very well. There is some minor slowdown on the more cluttered levels, but it's not bad enough to completely derail your ability to move around. The world record for the PlayStation version of Doom is 23 minutes and 36 seconds achieved by JRMHD91 on the 26th of July 2020. This version is also rock solid, making it essentially impossible to abuse out-of-bounds glitches. The run is as straightforward as you can get. The only thing that stopped this version from having widespread popularity in my opinion is again the lack of an auto-run option. When it comes to casual play, this really isn't a huge deal, but as I mentioned before, speedrunners need to be running 100% of the time, and holding down that extra button becomes a massive chore. And unlike the PC, which allows for easy hacks, these types of problems can't be overcome on consoles. Regardless of how conducive it is to speedrunning, the PlayStation version of Doom is a beautiful port. The hardware of the Sega Saturn is comparable to the PlayStation, so the fact that that version ended up being one of the worst ports is a huge shame. It just goes to show that oftentimes, the thing that keeps games from excelling is simply poor decision making. Luckily, Doom on the PlayStation sold extremely well, so at least some 90s console gamers got to experience Doom the way it should be. Now of course, all of the Doom aficionados will testify that the best way to play Doom is through one of the various source ports. 
Without all of the fantastic work modders and porters have done to improve the game, who knows how popular it would still be today. And you do have to take a moment to appreciate how epic id Software were to release the source code a mere four years after the game was released. You would have to assume though that without the encouragement of developers like Carmack who seem to really care about the gamers, the game would be a shadow of what it is today. Many games that were supremely popular upon release have now faded into obscurity, but Doom seems to always remain a powerhouse in the collective consciousness of gamers around the world. Now for some fun competition, I would like to challenge you to get a time of less than 10 seconds on Hangar on Ultraviolence for the Unity port. Submit your time onto the ranks at speedrun.com and I will be randomly selecting 5 gamers from those times submitted to win a $50 Steam voucher. Check the pinned comment for more details. As always, thank you so much for watching, I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.